Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss five dress shoe styles that every man should have. When you start a wardrobe, versatility is key because every item has to work with one another. That way, you get the most possible combinations with the fewest items in your wardrobe, which saves you money. Of course, the same is true for shoes. Over the years, I've acquired quite a collection of shoes, and today I've probably several dozens in my collection. However, when I started at zero, things were quite a bit different. I remember being lured into buying a pair of Lutus Gucci welted dress shoes. They were black, and I thought it was a staple, and after all, they were Gucci welted when they were on sale. The problem was their sole was extremely stiff, so it was very uncomfortable to walk in them, and they were also a little on the big side, but I thought, I was getting a deal and so I bought them. More importantly, stylistically, they were kind of odd because they were a Derby shoe, which is more casual than an Oxford, and they were wingtips with full brooging. At the same time, they were black in color, so it was really hard to combine them and I ended up not wearing them, so it was a really poor investment. The goal of this video is to keep you from making the same mistakes I did. Over the years, I learned a lot about shoes and if I could do it all over again, these would be the five men's dress shoe styles I would invest in first. By the way, all the shoes you can see here are from Ace Marks, a supplier of handcrafted Italian men's dress shoes, and I like them because they're hand burnished and they provide a really good value at under $300. I've had their shoes in my closet from the beginning and I like them quite a bit because they fit me extremely well for an off-the-rack shoe. Are those the best shoe money can buy? Heck no, but they provide an awesome value that you won't find otherwise in this price category. So without further ado, here are the five men's dress shoe styles that you should invest in. One, the Black Oxford. Why should you invest in this shoe? It's a all-time classic, especially as a cap toe. You can wear it for business, you can wear it at a funeral, and you can wear it for any kind of formal event out there. Also, unlike brown, black comes just in one shade, and so you don't have to invest in dozens of black shoes, but one is really a staple that you must have. So how do you wear a black Oxford? You can wear it with two-piece suits, three-piece suits, particularly in navy, charcoal, and gray, and any kind of other business-appropriate suit. It's also good with blazers, maybe a navy blazer with gray flannel slacks, or you can wear it with your tuxedo for black tie events or your dinner jacket, alternatively also for white tie or for formal morning dress. Probably the most popular black Oxford is the Capto Belmoral style without any form of broguing. However, if I could just invest in one pair, I'd go with the black Oxford hole cut because it's very neat all around. There are no seams, no extra cap toes, no broguing, and because of that, you can wear it even with the most formal ensembles, such as white tie. A hole cut is called that way because it's made from one piece of leather. If you go with bespoke models, sometimes you'll find a piece that has zero seams. Off the rack models always have one seam, and it's in the back, so it's very subtle, and it's a very clean silhouette that works for classic stylish people as well as minimalists alike. With a black hole cut Oxford, make sure you avoid the medallion on the tip of the shoe. That way you can truly wear it for all occasions that are formal. This Ace Marks model hole cut has five eyelets, which is very classic and an elegant long last with a timeless round toe. The second shoe style I'd invest in if I started all over again is the brown Derby Fulbrook wingtip. So why would I go with this shoe? Well, first of all, a Derby is less formal than an Oxford, and to learn more about the differences of these shoe types, please check out this video here. The Derby has an open lacing system, and because of that, it's more flexible, so when your feet are tired and they swell and get bigger, it's a more comfortable shoe than an Oxford. Because of that, I like it for traveling. I would choose a medium brown color, such as this antique brown cognac from Ace Marks. It's very versatile, and because they hand polished and hand burnished it, you see different shades of brown at the tip of the shoe than, for example, at the bottom. The holes you can see in the shoe is called broguing, and it just gives the shoe a much more casual character. To learn more about brogues, the history, and why they're called that way, please check out this in-depth guide here. So how do you wear the brown wingtip derby shoe? Basically, you can combine it with anything. You can go with suits, sport coats, corduroys, slacks, chinos, denim, you name it. The third shoe style I'd invest in 
is a loafer. Why a loafer? Well, basically, it's a slip-on shoe, it's casually, it's an entirely different style from the other two, yet it's a timeless classic. It's very easy to dress up or down and they come in different variations. You can have tassel loafers and sometimes people think they're old-fashioned, yet you can actually have them quite young-looking and modern, but if you don't like that, go with a penny loafer because they're really classic and they're called that way because you used to be able to put a little penny in the front opening. For versatility, I'd go with a different shade in brown than you chose for your Darby wing tip. Ideally, something maybe with a reddish undertone or something medium brown. In any case, something different. It's a great shoe for non-formal outfits. You can also wear it with seersucker or in summer, maybe without socks even or no-show socks and you should only avoid them with double-breasted suits, basically. I chose this model from Ace Marks in a medium brown because it has a very nice patina in the front. It has a, also a very nice last that hugs my foot in the middle, and that way my heel doesn't slip out when I walk, which is extremely important because you don't have a lace-up system that keeps things in place. The fourth shoe style I'd invest in is a double monk strap in a reddish color because it's very versatile, it's stylish, and it's young and it's just different than all the other shoes that you already have in your wardrobe at this point. This model from Ace Marks comes in a brandy antique brown, which means it was hand polished and hand burnished to achieve different color tones. It's made on a very clean last, there's no bruging, no cap toes, and the buckles are exactly in the right place, and I find the shoe extremely attractive. Unlike with black, with brown, you really want different shades of the same color, even though they're very similar, because sometimes one shade pairs a lot better with a suit or with some pants than the other. Because you're just starting out, make sure the new brown tone of your shoe is different than the ones you already have in your shoe closet. So how should you wear it? Well, you can go just with jeans or with slacks, maybe polo shirts. Some people even just have a t-shirt, maybe sweaters or cardigans, but it's also very good with a suit, either a three-piece suit, two-piece suit, or a sport coat combination. If possible, get a belt in the same color and also try to get a buckle that matches the color of the buckle on your double monks. In this case, if you buy this Ace Marks double monk strap shoe, you can also get the matching belt out of the same hand polished leather with a silver buckle, so it's very easy and you'll always look very dapper. The fifth shoe style I would invest in is a half brook Oxford in a medium brown. Here I have an Ace Marks shoe in a lighter antique tan, which is once again different than all the other brown tones in my wardrobe. It has a cap toe with a nice brooging, a medallion, and it's less casual than the full wingtip derby shoe. I'm adding it to the collection because it's kind of an in-between the more formal Oxford and the more casual derby. It fits right in between because it doesn't have a wingtip, but it has brooging, yet at the same time it's an Oxford and not a derby. I've had a model like this and I've wore and traveled extensively with it when I was a student because it would always go with everything I had at the time in my wardrobe. So how should you wear it? Basically, it's a super versatile shoe that you can wear with almost any suit. It's dark enough to be worn to the office. It's brown enough to be worn with tweed and everything basically in between. In my opinion, it's a great spring, summer, and fall staple, and you can even wear it during milder winters. So if you invest in these five shoe styles, you truly have an extremely versatile dress shoe closet, and you can hold off with investments and maybe invest in other parts of your wardrobe. If you're interested in a quality shoe with a flexible sole made out of a soft Italian leather, I urge you to take a look at Ace Marks because they really have the classic styles on a very elegant, medium with last that is very attractive, timeless, and it won't break the bank. In today's outfit, I'm wearing a custom-made three-piece houndstooth suit. It's tailored from a wool flannel from Harrison's. It's a brownish gray with an off-white or maybe a beige tone. And because of that, it's extremely versatile and can be worn with all kinds of shoes. My dress shirt is off-white and not quite white, which works well with the softer character of the flannel suit. I'm wearing it with a chartreuse green silk knit tie from Fort Belvedere and a woolen pocket square with a silk blend, likewise from Fort Belvedere. I pick up the green color in the pocket square and the purple and blue tones are picked up in my socks, which are also from Fort Belvedere, and shadow-striped cotton. The shoes I'm wearing are double monk straps from Ace Marks, 
and it shows them in their brandy antique brown color, which is nicely hand polished and has a reddish undertone to it. As such, it provides a nice contrast to my pants as well as my socks. I like how they burnish the tip of the shoe so it's darker and it just has a more gradient look to it, which is usually something you only find in more expensive shoes. Because the Ace Marks Double Mocks have silver buckles, I chose a pair of silver monkey fist cufflinks from Fort Belvedere so everything is harmonious and works well together. If you're interested in any of the shoes featured here in the video, please follow the Ace Marks link below. <laughs> Thank you.